What's going on, everybody? Aaron Guyette, Education Director and Master Coach of Battle Ropes with my incredible friend, Omero Rangel. So Omero Rangel, not only has he done pretty much every single walk of fitness, be it one-on-one, going to somebody's house, having them come to him, small group, large group, big classes, big boot camps, um, but he has been pretty much ride or die in terms of really understanding battle ropes and really being able to effectively use them for massive results for his clientele. Um, so much so that I have asked him and been honored by his yes responses to have him assist me in some of my uh, education fundamentals and advanced courses that I've taught over the last few years. So um, this has been a really long friendship for me. Um, Omero has been a great support to all things Battle Ropes, all things Living Fit, um, but even more so, and I think even more importantly, a great support to me personally in my life um, and helping me get better at what it is that I do. But enough about me and enough about how Omero has supported me. Let's discover a little bit of Omero. So Omero, what got you into fitness? Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, yeah, so it's, I mean, we can I'll try to sum this up and kind of, you know, make it as, as, as short and sweet as possible. But um, really, I just, um, you know, started off with, uh, you know, got was, uh, was was a chubby kid, you know, kind of just, um, you know, starting to play sports, wanting to get better at sports. Uh, I, I played um, baseball and football all throughout my youth. And so um, really it started with my buddy uh, next door had a bench. He had a bar with some of those sand weights, you know, with the plastic around them. And so we just decided, hey, we're about, let's say about 12 years old. And so decided, hey, let's just start bench pressing, right? That was that was pretty much the only thing. Bench pressing curls, I think that that was the only thing that we really did. Um, but it really... It's all you it, need, it, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly, right? Um, but it really opened my eyes to be like, okay, so what else could we do, right? Like, what else? And then so expanded to, um, you know, me, us starting to work out a little bit more as we got into high school and stuff. But um, I really got into it um, as far as just kind of wanting to dive deeper into, I guess, more of the bodybuilding aspect of it. When I first started off, like I didn't, I didn't really know the difference between, you know, performance training and power training and, you know what I mean? And all these different facets of, of fitness. Um, so it really was just, you know, at first, trying to get bigger, trying to get stronger, um, you know, and trying to get faster and um, just diving in. At that time, there wasn't really, I mean, a lot of access to, you know, searching things up on the web. So it was all magazines, right? So I was like, yeah. I'd, I'd read a lot of magazines, read a lot of books um, and, you know, start off from there. But as I started to, um, you know, learn a little bit more and get a little bit more interested, um, I decided to dive into it um, in school. And so uh, got my kinesiology degree um, in exercise science. And from there, it just, you know, what's that, how's that saying go? Um, the more, the more you, the more you know, or the more you learn, the more you realize that you don't know, you know? Yeah. And so it was just kind of like an ever, you know, an everlasting source of, of hey, this is something that I can dive deep into and still, you know, still to this day, I've been training for over 15 years and I learned something new on a weekly basis, literally just kind of, you know, whether it's training or whether it's mindset, it's, um, it really has kind of expanded from there. But, um, well, you know, started, like I said, went to school. Um, I went to Sac state, Sacramento state, um, but that was a really, really good experience for me in um, in terms of just being around other people that had that same passion, right? I, I I hung around my friends. We worked out when you know when we played sports or whatever in, in high school. But they weren't, you know, they they weren't as as into it as I was. And and they would often come to me like, hey, can you write me a program for this or can you write me? And you know, 
little did I know I'm like sitting there, you know, trying my best to write them a program. And it's just like, after a while, it's like, hey, this is a little bit too time consuming for me. Maybe I, I could, you know, go into this and actually start making, you know, making some money and, and doing this for a living. Um, but yeah, so once I, um, once I graduated, kind of just decided, hey, you know, had my whole like, um, I guess, starting in, in corporate gyms, um, you know, the big box gyms, which I, I really learned a lot from as far as just getting different people in front of me and, and knowing how to talk to different people. And I think that that's the biggest takeaway that I could get from, you know, starting out at one of those box gyms, because it's like, hey, the the hungriest are the ones that survive in those, you know, in those type of environments. And so really it just got me comfortable with talking to people on the floor, talking to people while they're, you know, not while they're working out, but, you know, just kind of how to approach people and, and not be, um, you know, overbearing with things that maybe that they could use some help with, you know? And so, um, just taking a nice, like subtle approach, um, with that, but, once I was, you know, first starting out, I, I really gravitated toward, I think anybody who works in a box gym, you know, the basic machines and, you know, hey, do your cardio on the, on the treadmill. I'll see you in five minutes, you know, that sort of thing. And it was just, that just was boring for me. That really, it started to take its toll. And like I said, it, it just, I, I, I knew that I wanted to do something that I could, uh, that I could move more, right? So that, and then that's where it kind of, where I, I started to discover, um, I actually worked at a 24 and they had this raggedy old, um, raggedy old rope. And it was a big rope. It looked like, a, you know, like a, like a, you'd find it on a boat or a ship, you know what I mean? Something like that. And so nobody ever really used it. It kind of was just off in the corner. And I hopped on there one time and it was just like 10 seconds and I'm like, what? Like my biceps are gas. My, my lungs are completely annihilated. My shoulders are on fire. Like, okay, there's something to this. And then that's when it really kind of just, you know, um, expanded from there as far as getting into more of the, um, you know, style of, of working out in multiple planes of motion. I think, um, functional training has been overused. So I try to stay away from that as much as possible now, but still, I mean, a lot of people understand, you know, as far as, you know, functional training, it's, it's something that you can, that, that helps you to live better, live your, you know, your regular life better, um, in my opinion. So yeah, just really, uh, really grab it, started gravitating towards that. And, um, as I, um, as I got older, I, uh, I had a little bit of, uh, you know, shoulder issues and a little bit of a, a knee issues from old injuries that I kind of just had maybe forgotten about, or my body was resilient and I, and I, it was limiting to me, uh, with certain moves that I could do and, and certain, uh, certain types of uh, styles of workout that I could do. And, um, once I discovered, you know, kettlebells and, and battle ropes, I found that one, it really locks in your form. It really helps you to move your body better. And also I could still like, you know, go all out on that stuff and not risk, you know, injuring myself, you know, as opposed to, you know, doing, you know, high, you know, high impact Olympic lifts or, or whatnot, but still get the same, like, you know, feeling in my heart and in my lungs and in my muscles. So that's really what got me, you know, that bridged me in, uh, from, that like more bodybuilding machine, you know, box gym style to really working out anywhere. Like I have my kettlebells and my battle ropes in my trunk at all times. I know people probably think like some of my friends, even kid, they're like, you probably have battle ropes in your trunk right now. I'm like, yeah, like, absolutely. <laughs> like you, you, you want to go real quick? I mean, we could, it'll take us about 20, 30 minutes and we'll get a good workout in. But um, yeah. And then it just, you know, kind of brought me to where I'm at today in a sense that like, Hey, there's there's a right way to to do things and and my white belt mentality really just um, wanted me to dive deeper into um, this style of training. Yeah, that's awesome. I love the the white belt 
uh, you know, al- always a white belt pro- approaching always as a white belt. Cause then even if you're the master, right, you're still pursuing mastery, um, which I think is, mm-hmm. is pretty incredible. So then, <clears throat> you know, so you, I know you've done the, the big box, the large chain style gyms or whatever. And so then now, you know, obviously, and I, I shouldn't say post COVID, but as the, the COVID pandemic controls and, adjustments and limitations are starting to wane away a bit. How, how have you come out on the other end? What's sort of the ways in which you offer your training, your um, experience, your education to clients, to members, to people? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, during during the whole pandemic, I was really just trying to make it um, make fitness accessible in any way possible to uh, to people, it, whether it was me kind of, you know, going to their going to their houses or going to their garage or meeting in a park, you know, and that's was that was one of the um, really, really beneficial things about, uh, you know, this this style of training, you know, using just, you know, kettlebells and battle ropes. Um, because it allowed me that access to be able to, you know, to, to move around. Um, post, Post-COVID, post it's been really, um, really eye-opening to me how many people have personal gyms in their garages. And so, really, um, I still wanted to touch on the aspect of, like, hey, you don't need much to get a, a quality program in. And the more that you have, then that's just icing on the cake, right? The more equipment that you have, then that's awesome. You can do accessory lifts. You can do a bunch of other stuff. But, you know, if even if you just have the bare bones, you can really get quality workouts and quality programming through those things. You just have to be a little bit more strategic and have to plan it out a little bit more. Okay, so what am I, you know, what am I trying to um, improve? Is it strength? Is it power? Okay, how can I use the tools that I have here to improve in that. And so really it, it um, kind of shifted my, um, you know, I, I still love the, the small groups and the large groups just being in person, but it shifted my, my approach to, okay, if I just can teach people how to properly use the equipment that they have, or just really getting them out. So many people had, you know, were messaging me like, hey, where do you get your battle ropes or, or you know, is, you know, wh- where, where would be a good, uh, good place to, you know, um, get the kettlebells from, it, you know, or whatnot, because especially somebody getting into that, it's like a whole new world to them, right? They, they understand barbells and dumbbells, and, you know, plates and, and whatnot. But as far as that, um, as far as, the, you know, getting, um, I guess more unorthodox or unconventional training methods or, or um, equipment, then it was a little bit more, you know, wanting to get more quality uh, quality equipment on that. And so, yeah, to me that like, hey, more people are gravitating towards this. And I think that it's still just skyrocketing. More people are understanding the benefits that you can get. No, and, and seeing that it's not just a gimmick, you know, it's not just like, oh, they look cool on a battle rope. I mean, you do look pretty, you know, badass on a battle rope or with a kettlebell in your hand, you know, no matter who you are. Um, but, you know, I think, that, you know, taking that approach and seeing people with those home gyms, it's just, okay, how can I get out to them and get in and impact more people? And so that's why I kind of decided, hey, I'm still going to do my small and large group, but I'm also going to take it online and I'm going to take it into more of a different approach as far as um, more holistically, you know, as far yeah. as mind body connection rather than just body connection. Right. Yeah. A lot of people want to just really focus on, you know, improving their body. But there is so much more, especially with COVID and especially being pent up in the house. It's it. There's there's so much that exercise does for your mental health. And, and even me personally, just understanding that like, hey, that, you know, if I feel like this, then there's a lot of other people that feel like that. And they just want some, you know, some programs and want to make sure that they're doing things correctly in the comfort of their own home a lot of the times now because they have those home gyms already established. So, 
Yeah, definitely. So you have uh, an account, an Instagram account, Train to Thrive, um, at least as as it stands right now. And when this releases, I'm I'm guessing it's probably still going to be called Train to Thrive. So somebody could probably find you by looking up Omero Ringel or or Train to Thrive. I'm sure that would bring them. So do you see that as sort of like a a way to sort of begin the education process, begin the, that mind body connection process. Like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to put out like high value content that's usable that you can implement. And then if you want to get sort of a deeper dive into it and really understand this so that you could start implementing it, whether it's um, in person with me in my small groups with me or here on my online, you know, course or, or content, is that kind of how you see the, that Instagram channel working? Because obviously you've got some really high value content on there. That's why I say that. Yeah. And, and really, I just want me, I, I want to be able to have people um, pretty much, you know, no excuses, nothing holding you back, right? Or, you know, in person with me or if you you know you, you can't do the online thing then you have this resource to at least you know really understand in, in scratching the surface of you know what um you know what you know battle ropes and just all the other facets of like my style of training can bring right so yeah. i do a lot of circuits i do a lot of um you know full body circuits where it's you know, I was, I was really used to be stuck in the mode, like, Hey, we're just hitting chest. Like, that's it. We're just doing chest and, and triceps, you know? And so really it, it allows you to see a little bit of what, you know, as far as the mind connection goes. And as far as the, you know, mind and body, once I've made that transition and once I've made that, um, that connection, then, um, and then it really, you know, hit a light bulb for me. It's like, I want to give people, you know, everything, not just the, you know, yeah, a lot of my stuff is, is, is just workouts, but, you know, I also offer a lot of insights as far as the way that I look at things um, and how that connects to your mind, right? Like it's for me, um, fitness and, and I show this on my Instagram, fitness is a lot more than just working out in a gym fitness is is an entire mindset lifestyle that helps me through a lot of those you know we all have those rough patches and and that's where i transitioned i just recently transitioned transitioned my name to train to thrive because i want people to understand that hey we're we're not this it doesn't end at the gym it doesn't end when we when we leave there it's okay how can i be um, a better human how can i how can i more efficiently live my life as a human through this you know and and i often look at hard times as those tough parts in your workout you know when your 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 heart rate is is skyrocketing you know you you feels like your head's gonna explode maybe you know and and just things can get overwhelming but it it also is a tool that i use um to kind of to kind of center that energy and to know, Hey, when I'm out in the real world, you know, regular world, regular life, it's still going to be throwing me those challenges. Right. And looking at it from a, not only like a, you know, a a meditative mindset, but a growth mindset, you know, where it's, I I might not be good at this now, but I'm going to improve. I'm, I'm willing to fail. I'm willing to, push through those those hard times that might be a little bit uncomfortable and i started to associate um you know me feeling anxious or me feeling um anxiety as as an indicator to me or or, you know a signal just to move right and it's just you know understanding that about myself and once i started to um talk about that and kind of you know um post things about that I found that a lot of people were responding to me as far as that goes, as far as like, Hey, it's a, it's a whole, whole, you know, being in itself in a, in a sense that it's, um, it, it benefits me through just 
regular life, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's something that you can use and you can always fall back on there. You'll always be able to, you know, rely on that fitness or even if everything else around you might seem like it's crumbling down, you know? Yeah. It's funny that, um, it, obviously that's something that you've turned into your mindset and your, your lifestyle. Like you said, you're the chubby kid and you were getting into activities and then, okay, let's try to, you know, push weight, uh, do, do bench press and do bicep curls. But, um, and then obviously turn that into a, a ton of other exercises, sort of this larger exercise library. And then even larger because oh, now I can use, I don't need a machine necessarily. I don't need a barbell necessarily. I can now use a rope. I can use my own body. I can use kettlebells. I can use whatever it is that, that you have. Boom. So now you have this like wide spectrum of movement um, that you can do. Um, but what's interesting is as you're talking and obviously I, I know this a, a bit about you as well. It's like, no, like that's the sort of mainstay for you. That's what allows you to have a growth mindset. That's what allows you to see um, that your, you know, that the training is helping you thrive even in the dark times, even in the tough stuff, even, whereas I think most people, it's like if anything, it, and I could be wrong, you know, the listeners on here could, be like, that's not true. And if that's not true, cool. Put it in the comments below. Tell me why it's not <laughs> true for you. Uh, and which is awesome. But it's like, I think most people, the moment they get a little bit of friction in life, fitness is the first thing, you know, their idea of fitness, right. And, and exercise or doing exercising or doing a workout is the first thing to go. It's like, boom, well, that's gone. I've got to, you know, struggle, bust my way through this. Whereas for you, it's like, it's exactly the opposite. It's like the, the anchor that you have, that's really helping you continue to thrive, even in this really tough time and difficulty where you're not thriving like you were when everything was going great and everything was easy and everything was awesome and everything is a reward and all that. Be but we all know, like you said, life isn't like that, right? Sometimes there's times in life where you feel like your head is going to explode and it's and your heart is racing and you're like, man, this is tough and this is stupid and I don't want this, but um, what a, what a great way to sort of, you know, microdose that and, and really turn to re you're reframing in a completely different way is what it seems like from, you know, my perspective, as opposed to seeing the workout or, or the exercise as something difficult. It's like something that gives you life. It's something that gives you, which man, I mean, I, I really think that that sort of nailed it. Right. Um, so yeah. then it is as much as you want to get into it or as little as you want to get into it. Uh, what are some of, cause you know, some people are like, ah, oh, yeah, but your life isn't, you know, that hard or whatever, what are some of the things that you're at least okay with sharing where it's like, man, these are some of the struggles I had. And these are some of the ways that I was able to, you know, keep fitness as a piece of that to help me in that struggle. And then also be able to still give to other people. Cause I, like, I know at least recently there's at least the struggle of COVID, right. If not anything else, yeah. Um, but yeah, is there anything that you have that kind of helps sort of sharpen that story a little bit more, create a little bit more vivid imagery there? Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I, I would say, you know, taking it a little bit further back, but, um, I'll come back to, you know, just this past year, but, um, a little bit further back is, is I, I grew up as, a kind of a, a a kid with a chip on my shoulder, you know, and that was first off fitness was not only for sports, but it was um, a way that I could release my anger in a, in a, in a, I guess a more controlled way, even yeah. though I was still slamming stuff, you know what I mean? Still slamming stuff on the ground or do, doing whatever. But that was really um, my first um, dose of being able to be like, hold on, like, I don't have to be like that out there. There is a time and there is a place that I can release this, this, you know, pent up, you know, pent up feelings or whatever. And that was just, you know, as far as like, you know, as you know, growing up men, women, however you want to look at it, we all have our own little, you know, internal struggles that we go through and, you know, it's there, there's struggles and we may look at them as like, oh, that's not a, that, that's not a hard struggle or that's not, but 
they are the same to ourselves, right? Like just because your struggle isn't the same as somebody else's struggle, you still feel the same about it, right? That feeling that you get. And so really that, that showed me, that was the first part that I was like, hold on, like I can just channel it here, you know, and I can really use it to progress me, you know, let's say to, you know, this past year when there was, um, I had a a lot of loss, a lot of loss this past year. And really what it showed me, it was, you know, I took every one of those little losses, whether you want to say, you know, the, the, I lost my brother last year. I, um, I really, I guess you can kind of consider it a, a loss of a job, but I made a huge transition, um, as far as going into, um, you know, really just diving deep into what we're, you know, and in, into what we're doing here. And um, as far as fitness goes, but um, looking at those, you know, trials and, and tribulations as as signs, right, or as um, messages or, or lessons to to show me to that, you know, I should be grateful for for a lot of the things that that I have and a lot of the people that have, you know, have touched me, that have helped me and just really, really showing and expressing my gratitude towards even just being able to move, right? Because sometimes it's like, even though there's something, there's nothing wrong with your body, it's just, you feel immobilized, right? You feel like just, you know, like, I don't know if I, you know what I mean? It just, you question certain things and really it was, um, you know, taking those losses and, and not looking at them as like, okay, like this, you know, the world's just trying to beat me up and trying to like run me into the ground. Cause the, I'm just scratching the surface on some of that stuff. Cause it goes a little bit deeper, but you know, looking at it as, okay, what is this trying to show me? What, what, what can I learn from this? You know, and that goes back to that white belt mentality. It's not just with fitness. It's with what can I learn about the world? What can I learn about, you know, these, these um, hard times? What are, what are they trying to show me? And it really showed me to be one, a lot more grateful and a lot more compassionate, you know, as far as like understanding where other people are coming from, not just focusing on my own problems or my own issues, but really being able to look people in the eyes um, and, and see like, Hey, they're, they're, they're toughing through this. Like they, they told me that they had a lot of other stuff go on too and they're handling it, you know? And, and to me, that's inspiring, you know, just to see people, um, it's, you know, it's not just people that have had stuff, you know, handed to them or, or, you know, red carpet laid out. It was, you know, Hey, they went, they went through their own struggles. And I find that, through fitness, when you come out on the other side of that, you'll see a lot more, you know, not necessarily, I wouldn't say like happy, you know, but a lot more fulfilled, right? A lot more of a sense of purpose, you know, and, and that's what it showed me is, is I need to tap into people, you know, as much as I can to let them know, like, Hey, if this can help like this, and, and that's why I was, I didn't understand why, um, you know, people were not working out during that time, but that's just where my mindset is. It's like even walks around the block. That's all it takes, you know, know, starting off with a walk around the block, you know, extend that into, you know, a longer walk or maybe throw in a couple of lunges at the end of your walk, you know, and it, and it's just a compound effect. Whereas I didn't start from doing, you know, battle ropes and kettlebells and all this stuff. It didn't start. Like, I just didn't pick it up one day and just was like, I'm, you know, I'm doing this. It was all a progression and it was all baby steps. You know, it's like, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try it and I'm going to fail at it. I'm going to try it. and I'm going to fail on it and get a little bit better at it. And then hopefully I just don't fail. You know what I mean? At this, I get it. I get to a certain point where I just don't fail at this. And so really it just, showed me I always had something to fall back on, right? Yeah. Whether it was, you know, me by myself in the garage or me going out to the gym and working out. And um, it was, you know, really hard with 
you know, all the gyms shutting down because I know that it probably affected a lot of people mentally um, as far as mental health goes. Yeah. Yeah. And well, and I think you're, you're a great spokesperson for that. Obviously, uh, barring the, the clarity on the, on the story of, you know, your loss this last year and, and the, and the difficulties that you were, you were just explaining, but you know, I, I know, and and nobody else does, but that you're, that you, um, would, you were a teacher and you taught special education. So, you know, all the spectrum of, of special needs. Um, and, and quite frankly, just did a really incredible job with that, um, position. Um, but then your calling was in fitness and then obviously the turmoil that is uh, fitness during COVID where certain brick and mortar gyms just have to like, Hey man, we can't foot the bill. So we just got to close this thing down, which I know allows you to adjust and, and, and move between that. Um, and so I think, if there's anybody that can speak to that, I, like, obviously you would be that person. I also know, and, and, you know, for anybody that's like, man, uh, I'm totally like vibing with Omero and this train to thrive concept. And man, I'd really like to step this out and where, where would I get started and how would I get started? So then how would somebody sort of get started with you if they're not in the Sacramento area or the greater Sacramento area, which is where I know you do your small group stuff and in-person stuff. Um, but uh, aside from hopping onto a certification and hoping that you are either assisting or educating in that certification, which I know you've worked your way up to, um, how would they get involved and, and maybe start those walks around the block and, and get some, uh, some of Omero's, uh, great coaching and, and whether it's the, for the mindset or for the, for the body, whether it's for the mind or the body or, but maybe it's for both. Yeah. Um, again, kind of, you know, Touching on that, um, you know, even, you know, with, um, I just want to touch on that a little bit about the teaching aspect of it is it was really hard for, um, and that was that transition that I was talking about. It was really hard for my students, which were are special, you know, all special needs, a lot of, uh, majority autism. Um, it was, it was, it's hard for, for me to sit at a desk for longer than an hour, right. Or to sit there. So what I had implemented and why I was so effective with a lot of my students is we had battle ropes, we had uh, medicine balls in there. I, you know, I got approval from the principal. I was like, Hey, do you care if I bring in some like fitness equipment? And so really with my kids, anytime they were about to, um, you know, have a meltdown or, or, you know, just um, upset about something, it was, that was always our go-to. It's like, Hey, you want to go take a walk around, you know, and I'd have, you know, my aides, take, you know, take them a walk around campus. You want to, you know, you had, they had options, right? You want to do 10 medicine ball slams. You want to do, you know, a, you know, a few seconds on the battle rope just to get it all out. And they actually started to really appreciate that. They were like, all right, go out, you know, go outside really mad, really pissed off and then come back just, you know, a little bit sweaty and totally cool. You, you know, and, and it was, it was a, a cool transition to see. It's like, and, and it really clicked in my head. It's like, sometimes we just need to move. Yeah. You know, sometimes we really just need to like, there's something inside of us that's just like, you got to get outside, man, or you got to go, you know, just take off, you know? And so really looking at that, and that's why I made that transition because it was really hard for me to see some of my kids on the other side of the screen and their parents, you know, there's no way that they could sit with them the whole entire time. That's a, that's a, you know, that's a hard job on them. You know, they got other stuff to do. They got jobs. They got, you know, they got their own lives. That it's So for me, it was, um, you know, really looking in at, you know, at that and being like, you know, that that's, you know, and even in between, we'd be doing jumping jacks. So, you know, we'd have 15, 15 minute learning periods. And then we'd ha- break it up with uh, like two minutes of just jumping jacks or we'd do planks or, you know, and so you know, just to see, um, youth responding that way, that's the only way that I could get them to focus and get them to, to want to engage, you know, is because we, you know, giving those breaks and allowing them to move a lot more than, than sitting in a desk all day, you know? And so, yeah, but, um, I know I kind of went off on a tangent there, but, um, kind of, you know, touched on that. So um, I I wanted to address that, but yeah, if you, if, if you're looking to, you know, just kind of 
get a feel for for what I you know what I offer who you know who I am. Um, it's train to thrive on Instagram. So it's train underscore uh, two underscore thrive. Um, but yeah, really um, just and and on there you can also access a link um, to my uh, my teachable account, which is called Thrive Academy. So it's um, it it's mainly just workouts right now and and programs. So I have two um, two different programs on there: a body weight program and a resistance weight program. But each month we are going to be adding a new uh, a, a, whether it's a new a new equipment or new modality, whatever you know. It'll be a single kettlebell next month, and then after that, it'll be you know um, we'll do um, uh, you know just battle ropes or you know and so just expanding on that, but then also getting that mindset component in there, really helping people to to understand that it's it's okay to you know feel a certain way or not feel a certain way sometimes, and and hopefully that um, I can you know, send that message out that you can always fall back on, on to fitness and, and on to exercises. And it doesn't have to be, you know, what I do all the time. It doesn't have to be what anybody else does. You don't have to even go to the gym. It's just basically moving and our bodies are made to move. And they're, especially if you're stuck at a desk, you know, nine to five job, um, you know, it's hard on your body. That's harder on your body than actually working out, you know, for, you know, the whole day or moving the whole day. And so, um, yeah, kind of see, you know, see what I have to offer on that. Those would be the avenues that I would say to, to approach. Awesome. awesome. So, yeah, the, the how we finish every, every single Living Fit uh, interview or Living Fit show is – we want to hear from our guests um, who obviously, you know, j have just shared their whole story and kind of who they are, at least the, the wave top version of it. Right. Um, what living fit means to them and obviously not living fit our brand, but just this concept that is living fit. So Omero, what is living fit to you? Huh, that's a, that's a very good question. And I know that I kind of like scratched a little bit on, on what that means to me, but it is absolutely, you know, is your body fit? What's fit, right? So thinking about it as far as you have, you, you're not stagnant. And that's what I think fit is as far as the, your body goes. You're always trying to progress to just get a, you know, 1% better, right? 1% better each time that you, you know, step into the gym just something at, you know, and you're never going to improve at all things, you know what I mean? At one time, but incrementally, if you break it down and you're moving in a direction towards something that you feel progress and, in, you know, and really um, tapping into the process of things and really enjoying the process, that's the, my little, like you said, micro dose of life, right? It's, it's, not at the end, right? You don't, you don't, you don't listen to a song to get to the end of the song, right? You, you don't dance to, to get to the end of the dance. You enjoy it while you're in it, right? And so that's really to me, living fit is, you know, your is your is your mindset fit? Is your body fit in in a sense that you're progressing towards something? And really, just your heart too. Your, you know, is is your heart fit? And that goes not just cardiovascularly. I'm not talking about that. You know, that that goes more into the body fit. But looking at it as, you know, what are you doing to um, to to be a better, better human? You know, and I know I mentioned that earlier, but really taking the time to to maybe see somebody and be like, hey, I, you know, I was in their position at one time, you know, or I can definitely, you know, um, you know, feel what this person is going through and, and having that compassion to be like, Hey, you know, like sometimes you just gotta, you know, gotta listen. And, and that is to me a, a big, um, a big transition where it went from, you know, like I said, went from just body fitness to a, a, a more, you know, holistic approach to everything, whether it's, you know, stress management, whether it's, 
emotional, um, you know, emotional management as far as, you know, really understanding yourself. Um, but living fit to me is all of those facets, you know, your heart, your mind, your body, all of that goes in coordination together. They're not separate things. They're all one thing. So, man, that's a great way to finish. Thank you so much, Omer. I really appreciate you taking the time. And I look forward to the next time that we get to talk about something new um, and talk about a little bit more uh, of your perspective on living fit and fitness training and your journey. Yeah. Well, I want to say thank you to you, Aaron, for kind of taking me under your wing. You know, I, 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 you, I met you at a time where I really needed a mentor and you have kind of just absolutely been that and above, you know, more than a mentor, you're, you know, a really, really great friend of mine. And I can't thank you enough for really just, um, you know, really exposing me to what battle ropes and what kettlebells and, and what all of this has to offer. And I, and I can't thank you enough for that, man. So I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you.